I don't like fake things on cars, fake vents, fake carbon fiber, fake wood. It all looks cheap. Another layer of this is wood veneer, a thin sheet of nice wood stuck on top of a cheap piece of crappy wood. It's all wood, but it's still a lie. This is how the Jag originally came, and actually how a lot of old Rolls-Royce and Bentleys did it back in the day. The Jag has lots of wood inside, and it all looks like burled walnut, which is a very nice and expensive wood, but it's just a veneer. And since I don't like veneer, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to redo the entire thing out of solid, regular walnut. It's actually also way easier to do it this way, I'm guessing. I've never done veneer, but it seems like one of those things that takes the kind of delicate focus that I don't have the patience for. Also, I have a CNC router, which makes this super easy. A few weeks ago, I redid the door cards for the Jag, mentioning that I would be redoing the wood on the doors. A few of you asked me why I wasn't going to reuse the existing wood since it looks pretty straight. Well, it's because I want all of the wood to look the same. In fact, for the dash, I found a huge single piece of walnut to cut everything out of so it would all be consistent. I forgot to get a picture of this huge piece of walnut before I chopped it up, so here is a reenactment. The doors I'll get to later, but the dash looks pretty sad right now, so I'm going to work on that first. Step one of this process was 3D scanning all the existing wood pieces, that's what all these dots are for. Most of them are in decent shape, but some are not. I had to get a little creative with the CAD model for this piece, I hope it fits. They probably router cut all of these things out using a master template, they're all pretty basic shapes screwed together, it makes them easy to CAD. I moved my CNC router onto this roller table thing, and I hadn't yet resurfaced the MDF board to make sure it was flat, so I did that inside my makeshift tent so it wouldn't get sawdust all over my garage, which it did anyway. I started with the main dash gauge cluster, specifically the B side, which has pockets cut out for the gauges and switches to fit in. This let me fine tune my spindle speed and feed rate. Wood is pretty forgiving, so I just kind of ballparked it and called it good. This piece came out great. I decided to do the chamfer cuts by hand with my router. I didn't really know how deep I wanted them to go, so I just did a few passes until it looked good. The wood was held down to the router table with these four screws in the corner. I left some tabs to keep the final piece constrained. I cut those tabs with a handsaw, and then I flush cut the tabs down with one of these bearing router bits that probably has a name. Flush router bearing bit? I don't know. Next up was the main upper dash piece. I cut all the angled parts with the ball nose end mill, doing a ton of passes. I had to go back and smooth this down, but this got me most of the way there. I cut the ashtray separate. This has a lot of angled surfaces on it, and I didn't really like the way the wood grain showed up on this piece, so I ended up doing it again. I cut it out in a slightly different orientation to the wood grain, and it came out a lot better. But I did have to go back and recut the actual ashtray pocket with one of those flush router bit things. I should really figure out what these are called. This car originally had three glove boxes. This is because, and this is true, people in 1950 England had six hands. I have two, so I'm going to leave out the one in the middle, but I'm going to keep the outer two. These were originally made with multiple pieces of wood glued and nailed together. The whole thing is slightly taller than the large piece of walnut I bought, so I glued some extra walnut on the top at a couple of places to get the height I needed. Hopefully this won't be too noticeable, and if it is, who cares? I didn't bother to wait the full 24 hours for the glue to set because I like to live dangerously. The first cut on these was the opening. I left some tabs in there so the last cut wouldn't cause the piece to jump and break my tool. With the piece screwed to the table, I cut those tabs with this vibrate cutter thing that I also can't remember the name of. The glove boxes have this wood piece stuck on here, but rather than cut out the back of this to fit, I just cut part of it into the wood, and then after I glued on some extra wood to reinforce it. This took a while to cut out because of this big radius here. I didn't feel like doing a ton of sanding, so I just let the machine do its thing. Yay, automation. I had a friend bandsaw my last bit of walnut in half so I could make the doors for the glove boxes. These pieces had an imperfection in the wood, so I lined that up with where the handles will go so they'll be hidden. I cut out new handles, but I don't like the way they look, so I'm going to be redoing these. Once those were done, I cut out the parts and cut the tabs flush using the tabby flushy router thingy. And then, sanding. So much sanding. Ridiculous amounts of sanding. If this video were to accurately represent how much sanding I did, then this part of the video would be at least seven years long. At least. I started to put a coating on these, actually I just used the sealer, but then I decided I should probably test fit these before I get too far since I'll probably have to do some trimming. But first... The gauge cluster on this car is a mess of dirt, dust, crappy wiring, barely functioning switches, and gauges that literally haven't moved since old HW was in office. I thought about trying to reuse some of the switches, but I'm just going to get new hardware. The gauges I do want to reuse, kind of. Not the mechanicals inside, just the face and the glass. Fortunately, the front of these is glass, it's not plastic, so they should clean up pretty easily. 
At some point, I'm going to add stepper motors to these so I can have the gauges output useful information. Speedometer will be speed, temperature will be one of the 15 temperatures the Tesla powertrain looks at, probably motor stator temperature. I can have one of these show power out to the motor from the throttle or regen. Anyway, that is for a later time. For now, we're just cleaning these things up. The fronts come off with a bit of a turn. I tried to gently pull off the needles, but they kind of broke on the way out. I might be able to salvage these, but probably not. They have a cool little counterbalance weight on them, so they're not affected by gravity or cornering forces. These old gauges are all mechanical, and they almost look like watch mechanisms. Delicate gears and springs. Neat. I had this makeshift switchboard here so I could turn things on and off and switch the car into drive and such. Nice, but ugly. All of this stuff is going into the new dash, but we're going to do it with switches that feel appropriate for the time frame of this car. I drilled all of these lower holes by hand after the CNC since they're at an angle. I also had to pocket out the rear so some of the shorter switches would fit in. I decided to move my fuse block to this piece since it's kind of where all the switches are, so I'll have to do some rewiring. But that is a problem for future Matt. Present Matt has to get all of this in the car, so it's time to test fit. I added these kick panels back when I did the door cards, and I added foam under them so the vinyl would have a nice plush look to it, but this does interfere with the glove boxes, so I had to go and trim off some of the sides. I did this with those flush router bit cutty things. I just used a smaller bearing to cut off a sixteenth of an inch at a time. A few passes, and it fit great. I also needed to trim the wood covering the gauges. I knew that there was a cutout up here, but it was bigger than it needed to be, so I decided to cut it later. But actually, it does need to be this big because of the way it has to be installed. Anyway, I did that on the router table. I'm sure this is not the correct way to use a router table or the best way to do this, but it did work. Mostly, it chunked off a bit of wood, but I found that piece and glued it back on, and nobody will ever know. The glove box and centerpiece have brackets screwed into them for mounting. I just transferred those over from the old parts. I was going to use new screws, but I don't have the right size, and I didn't feel like driving to the hardware store, so it gets the old ones. The dash is held at the top with bolts in the bottom with these brackets I swapped over. The glove boxes screw into the metal gauge cluster, and I actually cut off the bottom mounts while trying to make room for my new switches, but I can probably fix this with some small brackets. This top piece, I don't know, it probably has a name, it goes on the dash and it's kind of a wood board, so let's call it the dashboard. The dashboard has some fit issues. I need to cut out some wood in the corners to clear the windshield. I actually had this in the CAD model for one side, but not the other side, probably because the other side looked like this. So I did a little trimming to get that to fit in there. These mount to the car sheet metal using screw studs welded to a plate. The plate is screwed to the back of the dashboard. I made new ones out of stainless because the old ones were a little tired looking and also used a weird Whitworth thread pitch that's hard to find nuts for. To get these in the right location, I just screwed them to the car, put double-sided tape on the back, and then installed the dashboard in the right place. Then I just unscrewed the studs and pulled the whole thing off with the plates in the correct location. The glove box has these little handles on them. I made new ones I didn't like. We talked about that already. And then I replaced them with even newer ones, which I also don't like. They're not great. They're not symmetric. But you know what? They're good enough for now. Probably good enough for forever. I gave all the parts a nice coating of polyurethane, getting a bit of overspray onto everything in the garage. This will nicely coat the sawdust that is already coating everything in the garage. Woodworking is dirty. The glove boxes needed to be assembled with the close-offs on the back, the crappy handles for the doors, and of course the hinges. I'm not putting these locks back on, one of the old ones had a lock. I do need to add something to keep the doors closed. Jaguar used these spring detent things. I started to use those, but then I decided to go with something a little bit different. I also got new hinges. I wasn't really sure the best way to get these in the right place, but this worked pretty well. I screwed two of the hinges to the glove box, then used double-sided tape to get the hinges to stick to the right spot on the door. I wrapped the door in a few layers of painter's tape to make sure it was centered in the opening. I also screwed the ashtray to the dashboard and put the shiny chrome ashtray in place. I'm going to reuse a couple of the dash warning light lenses, so I'll pop those in, but I am replacing the light bulb with an LED. The key is getting replaced since the last one barely worked. New 12 volt plug with the old cigarette lighter. The headlight switch is new, but the lever attached to it is the same old one. And all the controls are new, but I tried to get switches that fit with the 1950 Jaguar theme. The windshield wiper switch was not even close to an old Jag look, so I used one of the old knobs. I had to make a spacer for it to fit, and I'm waiting on a new set screw, which is why this currently has a Phillips screw head poking out the side. Other than that, it looks great. After that, it was just a matter of installing everything. I will need to take this apart to wire up all the switches and to make functional gauges, but that comes later. I also need to get the windshield wipers working at some point, or not. The ones in the Honda haven't worked for at least a decade, though I have already driven this car in the rain, so maybe it's worth doing. 
The old wiper motor used this screw mechanism. I lost some of the pieces and it's obnoxiously big, so I'm gonna replace it. I 3D scanned behind the dashboard, so at some point I can design up some linkage for this. I was gonna wrap it up here, but since my garage is already coated in a fine layer of sawdust and polyurethane, I decided to finish up the wood trim for the doors. If you remember when I did the new door cards, I skipped the wood trim on the top, and now seems like a good time to finish it. These are pretty straightforward pieces. They're half inch wood cut out with some chamfers and some extra wood screwed to the back to hold it to the door. It would have been easy to make these by hand, but I still gotta justify the cost of this thing, so we'll do it the easy way. Although I did do the chamfers on the router table. On the top, there is a quarter inch trim piece. I also did these unnecessarily on the CNC. These screw to the top to hide all of the screws that hold the trim to the door. The rear door does have ashtrays and I thought about leaving these out. If you smoke in my car that I spent all this time rebuilding, I will throw you out of a moving vehicle. But they do look nice. They are reminiscent of a time when lung cancer didn't exist and car crashes didn't exist. And the only real danger in the world was the commies. Anyway, I cut these out of walnut by just screwing them to the table through the bottom. Then I pocketed the ashtray part by clamping them to a vertical piece that I screwed to the table. All of this was finished again with a nice coat of polyurethane. I went with poly because the car originally had a nice gloss finish to it, but if I was going to do it again, I'd go with a semi-gloss. I think it would look better with the regular walnut, but it's still pretty nice. In putting this together, I noticed that I cut the pockets a little too close to the top trim so the ashtray wouldn't open. This really doesn't matter since nobody's going to be smoking in this car, but it bugged me, so I fixed it. And that's it. A definite improvement. It's looking really good. I am almost done with this car. I could finish it up, or I could put it to the side and forget it exists for several months while I try to make a Viper go off-road. It used to be that you had to impress people to get people to watch your show. Now you just have to impress the algorithm. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. All hail the algorithm. <laughs>